Thanks, as you get everybody in and settled. Um, I'll just uh, make a couple of quick notes. Um, I've had a couple of questions about audio and video access. Um, I will have the ability to unmute participants at various points during the webinar when we're having more active dialogue. Uh, there isn't an option um, to, with this platform in order to provide video access for all participants. Um, so it would be more on the audio side. And uh, that is at, uh, at various points we're going to unmute and have more of a discussion. You do have the option at any given time um, to answer, ask questions in the chat thread, and I'm going to be moderating that throughout as Lisa and Rebecca present. And we'll be able to have dialogue through that. And we have a Q&A as well uh, down at the bottom. You'll see that link. You can ask questions there at any point, and I'll make sure that the panelists have those for our Q&A session as well. So. Um, yes, a, a couple of people are asking questions whether they are currently muted. I know that a lot of us are working from home um, and may have a little background noise. So absolutely, I don't hear anything. So there's no worry about that. Um, we will unmute uh, at, on an as requested basis. So don't worry about any background noise on your side. So don't, that will be completely fine throughout this session. Perfect. So we've just got a, yeah, I think we're getting ready. We could probably begin. Um, Lisa and Rebecca, did you want to join on audio and video and we can get started? Hello, everyone. Um, thank you. Thanks for joining us for um, the Secret Path webinar, how to use Secret Path in your classroom. I uh, really appreciate you taking the time out of your um, super busy schedules right now during these crazy times. Um, to really delve into how to use Secret Pass. So thank you. Wonderful. Yes, I'm very excited to be, uh, I guess, speaking with you all, even though we can't hear or see you right now. Uh, I'm sure we're going to have some great discussions when the time comes, and hopefully you're able to walk away with something useful. All right, so let's begin. So again, welcome very much. Uh, and uh, we hope that over the next hour, you'll gain some insight into the secret path, uh, talking about reconciliation and reconciliation, and come away with a few resources that you're able to use in your classrooms. Um, so first, we just want to acknowledge the land we are on, no matter where we are, we are on Indigenous lands. Um, currently, I'm speaking to you from Treaty 13, Dish of One Spoon, Pacaranto, or Toronto, um, home to Mississaugas of the Credit, First Nation, traditionally the Anishinaabek, the Chippewa, the Haudenosaunee, and the Wendat peoples. And I'm speaking to you from the unceded territory of the Ganyankahaga. Um, Chihochike, Montreal is historically known as a gathering place for many First Nations. Um, so I'm Lisa. Uh, I work for the Gord Downey and Cheney Wenjack Fund. Uh, I think I've met some of you out there and some of you, if you're emailing Lisa at Downey Wenjack, that's me. Uh, I'm the manager of education and activation for the fund. Um, I was, uh, my background uh, as a settler and newcomer. My mom's side, I'm seventh or eighth generation settler, depending on which way you go. Um, and on my dad's side, he came here from New Zealand when he was 16. I was a teacher with the Toronto District School Board teaching high school for 14 years before joining the Gordon Downey and Cheney Winjack Fund uh, two and a half, three years ago. Uh, and I'm Rebecca. I'm also a settler newcomer to Canada. Um, my parents came over from, or not my parents, my families came over from uh, largely Eastern Europe, um, some from the Ukraine and some from other Eastern European countries, uh, as well as Ireland and um, Newfoundland before it was Canada. Um, so because we are talking about uh, topics connected with residential schools, uh, we want to make sure that you are able to take care of yourself as well as encourage your students to take care of themselves uh, as you're talking about residential schools and the emotions that come with that uh, throughout Secret Path Week and throughout the year as you're speaking about residential schools at various times, as well as treaty um, and other Indigenous issues. Uh, so we have a few, a couple of resources listed here. The first being a Health Canada resource for coping with those emotions. 
um, specifically for those affected by residential schools. There is a 24 seven uh, phone number, which is 1-866-925-4419. Um, and when you're teaching with students, um, there's kids help phone is always available 24 um, seven. And they actually just introduced on Friday, um, this new texting where if you text 6868, and if you were First Nations or Métis or Inuit, uh, if you type that, they'll try to um, hook you up with a corresponding crisis responder who, who will understand your needs a little better. And that's actually for adults as well. Uh, so our goals for this webinar are that you will come out uh, having experienced uh, learning from resources based on the secret path. Uh, our hope is that we will all have a chance to discuss how to adapt resource, resources for different contexts. Obviously, you know, even in an ideal world, our classrooms are all different. Uh, and especially now where some of you may be teaching in a blended way, completely online or completely in the classroom, uh, we want to open up the opportunity for you to uh, think about and discuss how you could use these resources in these different contexts. Uh, we also hope that you will learn about other events uh, connected with Secret Path Week and then to prepare for the week as well. Uh, so we do want to give a quick little run through of the Zoom platform. So some of you have, have been asking questions about video and audio, which Andrea has addressed, just to put it out there for all of us. Um, we have a few kind of best practices for this webinar. The first being, please stay muted. Um, you may, uh, it, it helps with our, with our audio to make sure that everyone can hear clearly, um, especially if there may be background noise where you are. If you do want to ask a question, that's absolutely okay, even if there's a little bit of background noise, we totally understand. Uh, so we'll ask that you raise your hand and then the moderator, Andrea, can unmute you at that point for you to ask the question. Uh, if you don't feel like asking um, out loud, you can certainly make use of the chat. Uh, we are rec recording this webinar, so if that's a concern for you, absolutely, please feel free to make use of the chat. Um, and then you can ask any questions that you have in the Q&A section, and we'll address them at the end or at various points if there's a short lull. I think it was really funny when you said, please stay muted, my dog started acting up. So <laughs> I understand you if they're wanting to mute. <laughs> Um, so the Gore Downey and Cheney One Jack Fund, for those of you um, that aren't familiar with us, um, we're not affiliated with any other charities. Um, and in fact, the fund started um, with uh, the Downey family and the One Jack family really wanting to carry on the legacy of, of Cheney and Gord. Um, so it started very grassroots. It started actually as a Tides Foundation. We, were, we used to give out funding and then they realized, no, we need to focus on education because that's actually how we're going to make change throughout Canada is if we educate everyone to actually do something with the knowledge that they get. Um, so we started the Legacy Schools program. Uh, this is the third year it's been running. So it's a free national um, initiative um, with the objective of trying to engage everyone, empower everyone, and connect students and educators so you can actually make change. Um, sign up for free at legacyschools.ca and then we'll send you a toolkit, which is a box like this, which has copies of the secret path in it as well as a reconciliation guidebook, um, flags, posters. We try to change it up and every year we actually send out a booster kit. So if you had signed up, many of you should have gotten your booster kits by now. If you haven't, email me. Um, so we just try to keep, um, we're constantly changing the materials we have too because this isn't perfect. We're trying to grow and change and learn from you. So if you have any advice or recommendations, we try to include that. This year we actually included a poster, uh, sorry, a calendar that had all sorts of po uh, pictures from different reconciliations actions taking place at your schools. Um, so we provide educational resources and there's also resources online that anyone can access for free at any time. Those are shared resources from different groups throughout Canada and we've tried to break them down even to be regionally as, as well. So we're hoping that schools and everyone throughout Canada can um, help to ensure that the unique um, interests and perspectives of Indigenous people are recognized and implemented in their your schools and communities because um, they are very much unique to wherever you are in Canada. Um, so Secret Path Week um, is coming up uh, October 17th to 22nd. 
It's a pretty uh, emotional time for us because um, uh, October 17th is actually the um, anniversary of Gord Downey's passing uh, and the 22nd is Cheney's. Um, so we try to honor their memories during that week. Um, October 17th this year, we're actually going to be doing uh, the Return to Secret Path Live. It was a, a recreation of Secret Path that Gord did. Um, with the original band, but we had Indigenous and non-Indigenous musicians playing last year, and there's going to be a screening of that um, available October 17th, and you can play it with your classes or family members um, throughout the week. Um, it's, it was pretty pretty fantastic. Buffy St. Marie headlined with Serena Ryder and White Horse, and it's the GAC, the Lie Talk. It's, it's really incredible. Um, as well, we'll have different live sessions um, throughout the month of October, actually. And um, for the week, we've got a whole bunch of classroom, classroom sessions at Exploring by the Seat of Your Pants. So I included the link on here if you want to click through and sign up for any of them. Um, NFB is also providing uh, Nipa, Nipa Wista Moen, uh, We Will Stand Up, uh, Colton Bushy's uh, story, the documentary, and then um, the director, Tasha Hubbard, as well as one of um, Colton's relations, Jade Tututis will be doing a live event through Exploring by the Seat of Your Pants for questions and answers if any of your students want to, to tune in and ask. Um, as well, there's a bunch of free movies. So all the events are actually list listed um, at the bottom there. If you want to come to our website, we've got a growing calendar of events. You're welcome to join us. Um, and just so you know, I've talked about reconciliation. So the word is, um, so, to move re reconciliation forward, we actually need to take action. Um, so reconciliation action is a meaningful action that is actually doing something to move um, reconciliation forward with the knowledge that you're, 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 you're learning and growing with. Um, so the change starts with every single one of you actually, after you learned um, about Canada's true history with residential schools, doing something about it to, to relay forward the, the momentum to change, like Gord said, to do something. All right. Um, so I uh, work with Learning Bird, um, and over the past four years, Learning Bird has worked with more than 48 schools and communities from coast to coast to coast. Uh, we generally create resources uh, for grades 6 through 12 that have an Indigenous focus, and we work with community members, knowledge keepers, teachers, uh, and elders in order to do that. Our resources span from English, math, science, social studies, indigenous languages, as well as indigenous cultures. And over the past few years, we've partnered with uh, the Downey One Jack Fund to create lessons for using Secret Path in the classroom that discuss topics such as storytelling, language loss, and more. And so today we are going to be seeing some of these resources. They're pretty awesome. <laughs> All right, so the lesson plan for today is for all of you to actually take on the role of students. Uh, so you can take your teacher hats off, put on your student hats, uh, and today we are going to be completing, <laughs> we are going to be completing a few activities. Uh, so first off, we're going to watch a, a Learning Bird resource, uh, which is called Indigenous Languages and Secret Path. After that, we'll be completing another resource which accompanies the first called Finding a Secret Path Mapping Activity, and then we'll complete a discussion questions from that activity. So we'll be doing the first part of the mapping activity. The second part is a series of discussion questions and reflection questions, which unfortunately we won't have, a time, we won't have time for today, but we'll be able to get in one of those. Uh, after that, we'll have some time to debrief and discuss, and discuss the, the activity as a whole. Uh, but this is going to be our plan. So uh, I'm going to switch on over to the video at this point. As uh, Rebecca switches over, I'm just going to pop up a quick poll question. Uh, if you guys wouldn't mind taking a moment to answer this, just the question of, do you already have a copy of the Secret Path book? It also lets us know if you're legacy schools, because if you are, you will. <laughs> <laughs> That's another question we should have asked Lisa. <laughs> oh, I'll know. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> you can feel free to put that in the chat if you're part of the Legacy School program already. Yeah, feel free to let us know in, in the chat. And if you're not, you're welcome to sign up. It's free. Yeah, 
I put the link in the chat thread so people can grab that. Thanks, okay, Andrew. I think that's pretty much everybody. So yeah, good, a good mix actually. So I'm gonna end that. Perfect. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and play the video. Did you know that the United Nations declared 2019 the International Year of Indigenous Languages? If so, do you know why? In this video, you will learn about the importance of Indigenous languages. We will also find connections between Chani Wenjak's story as told through Secret Path, and the process of Indigenous language revitalization taking place today. In 2007, the United Nations, also known as the UN, released the United Nations Declaration on the Rights of Indigenous Peoples, with an entire section dedicated to the importance of Indigenous languages. This document also protects Indigenous peoples' rights to non-discrimination, employment, freedom, security, and self-governance as distinct nations. So you see, indigenous languages are very important. The UN states that languages are not only our first medium for communication, education, and social integration, but are also at the heart of each person's unique identity, cultural history, and memory. In other words, this means that our languages are a part of who we are, and the UN states that indigenous peoples have a right to preserve and protect their languages. Take a moment to think about the following question. How does Secret Path, Chani's story, and the stories of many children who were sent to residential schools connect to the topic of Indigenous rights? Secret Path is very much about Indigenous rights. Chani Wenjak, the main character in Secret Path, was one of hundreds of thousands of Indigenous children sent to residential school. Residential schools tried to erase the culture and language of indigenous children and replace them with a European way of life. In 1967, Chani ran away from residential school and attempted to walk over 600 kilometers home to his family and his culture by following the train tracks. He passed away from the cold before he could make it there. He was only 12 years old. When Chani's story reached Gord Downey, he was devastated by the human rights violations of the residential school system. Chani's story moved him to write a collection of ten poems that grew into an album, a graphic novel, and a film, all about Chani's journey. When Chani set out, all he had with him were seven matches and a map, written in English. As you watch the following clip, imagine how Chani might have felt and pay close attention to what you see. Yeah. 
couldn't hear, I would feel Now, pause the video and discuss the following questions as a class. What happened to the words on the blackboard and the map? What do you think this symbolizes? If you missed it, you can always go back and watch again. All right, so since we're all students, is there someone who would like to put forth an answer to the discussion questions just quickly? I'll just ask if anyone wants to speak or uh, they can ask questions in the chat for sure. If you'd like to speak verbally, um, just raise your hand and I'll make sure I can allow you to, to unmute. Losing your language, yeah, definitely. We had Sarah, or did you want to speak? Yes, can you hear me? Yeah. yeah. Shane, did you want to go ahead? Yeah, sure. Just uh, the idea of lack of provision. It looked like maybe he needed glasses and he didn't understand what was going on. Just a lot of confusion about why he had to learn something he didn't want to learn. Yeah. And seeing someone else in the chat. Uh, oh, did you want to add? Yeah. yeah. Did, did you want to add anything, Sarah? I think she's. Um, that's all we had in terms of the uh, active at the moment. Perfect. So yes. Yeah, so as I was, I was as. I as I was saying, sorry. <laughs> um, we're seeing, we're see I'm seeing a lot of comments in here in the in the chat also about using language and English changing to syllabics and back and English not being the first language. So yeah, that's that's definitely a strong theme of what's going on in Secret Path. All right, so I'm gonna continue playing the video. Chani was put into a residential school system that attempted to prevent kids from learning their indigenous languages. They did this by teaching only in English or French. This meant that Chani couldn't read the map that he had with him. In many cases, this created distance between children and their families because they couldn't talk to each other. Today, indigenous language rights are recognized as a global right and language revitalization is happening all over the world. 
As you continue learning about different indigenous folks' experiences with language in the past, present, and future, reflect upon the stories of Chani and thousands of other children who went to residential school. Here are some questions to help guide your reflection. How did the residential school system affect the lives of indigenous children and their families? How did it affect indigenous languages? What does revitalization mean? How might indigenous languages be revitalized? All right, so I'll ask you all to keep those uh, reflection questions in the end in mind as we switch over to our next activity. Just give me one moment. I really like that um, in these lessons too, somebody I noticed wrote, I didn't realize it said run, run, run last time, which was, uh, it's nice having these little lessons because it, it you can rewatch the secret path and actually take different things away from it the more you uh, look at it with a different lens. Yeah, absolutely. All right. So uh, this next activity is a um, is a handout activity. I'm going to be sending the link in the chat to all of you. Uh, just one moment. So you should all have received the link. You can open it up on your own. There are two pages. Uh, this first page here is the introduction and the questions. And then on the second page, you should see a map of uh, what we now call Canada. So I'll just go through the introduction and the directions briefly with you. Um, so in the secret path, Cheney was not able to read the map that he took with him on his journey because his first language was not English uh, and the map that he had was in English. So he wasn't able to tell where he was or where he was going based on those landmarks. So what we're going to ask you to do as students uh, is using only the map on the next page and your knowledge of Canadian geography, complete the following tasks. So you'll see number one says to mark your current location with a circle. We're not going to be able to do that, that right now. I'm going to ask you to imagine where your current location would be. Uh, the next one is same thing. I'm going to ask you to imagine where the capital of your province would be. As you're doing this with your students, I'm going to throw my teacher hat back on. As you're doing this with your students, you could certainly use any number of whiteboard apps uh, that are online, or you could ask your students to print these documents out beforehand so that they are able to make the physical marks, um, especially with younger students, having the physical marks is going to be easier to help them complete this activity. Uh, that being said, we're all adults and I'm gonna ask you to imagine. <laughs> um, so once you've figured out where your current location is and where the capital of your province is, uh, there's going to be a few questions that we're gonna ask you to answer. So how far are you from your destination? What is the terrain like? Uh, how long would it take you to get there by uh, on foot or by car? What supplies would you need? And where can you stop along the way to eat, sleep, and find shelter? So I'm going to leave us about 10 minutes for you guys to go through this activity. Um, and then we will reconvene for the discussion question. Uh, I'll leave the map up here uh, so that you're able to see it if you'd like to get a bit of a better view. Uh, while you're also looking at the questions. And if you need help or need some clarification, you can feel free to ask either in the chat or the Q&A. All right, have fun. I believe everybody's from different places too, so this will be interesting. Yeah, it will be good.
If anyone has any questions while you're going through it too, just let us know. Do you have a question whether um, you're supposed to write them down or just think about the answers? Either one is acceptable depending on what your specific situation is. Um, we can also, uh, uh, if anyone wants to talk about their answers or share something, we can also do that by just raising your hand and I'll, uh, I'll enable that. Rebecca, did you see that question about Dropbox? Oh. You're muted. Uh, actually, I can answer that. Oh. So there's a second link I've posted in the chat thread as well that should go to all attendees. Um, if the Dropbox link is not working for you, we also have a Bitly link that takes you to the full list of resources. So you can access that there as well. And the resource you would be looking for is finding a secret path mapping activity. The link should work for, for everyone. Um, it should be just a view link that, that you should be able to access without an account. But if it's not working for you, you can definitely use the bit.ly that Andrea just linked. Graham, did you have a question that you wanted to ask or a point to, to mention?
All right, so we have about four minutes left. Um, if you would like to post any of your answers in the chat, you certainly can. You can change the option in your chat to uh, broadcast your message to all panelists as well as attendees if you would like to share your answers with others. We are asking you to stay where you are, like where you're living. So if you don't feel comfortable, that's absolutely okay. Uh, but you can certainly answer some of the other questions in the chat if you if you feel like it. Actually, uh, Rebecca and Lisa, I just had a question here from Audrey that you might want to address. Um, she was looking for resources that could be used for individual remote learning paths. Do you guys have any ideas as educators as to how she could maybe work some of these materials in in that context? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so this particular activity, for example, could certainly be done uh, as a remote learning pack. Um, what I would suggest is uh, you request that students watch at least the, the clip of the secret path where Cheney is looking at the map, if not the whole video, of course, would be ideal. Uh, but the clip that's important uh, for context for this activity would be the, um, the clip where Cheney is looking at the map. Uh, the secret path is available on YouTube, um, so you could have students access it that way. Um, and then request that they complete this activity um, in order to kind of show their learning. Students would be answering the questions on the first page that you can see. Uh, and then there are uh, reflection question. There is a reflection question that students are asked to write out as well as some discussion questions that in a remote learning setting you can certainly ask students to write out answers to as well or have a discussion on Zoom um, that you could do through that way. Uh, we do have other handouts um, in our uh, webinar or in our uh, resource kits that we've created um, on our side. And then Lisa, I'm sure that there are many print-based materials that are part of the toolkit as well. Um, sorry, yeah. So yeah, if you if anyone wants to go to um, legacyschoolresources.ca, there's lots of different resources you can look at on there and some you could apply to online learning. Um, yeah, it'd be nice to even if you're, depending on what platform you're using, even taking the map and like, like that Rebecca's got up now and even sharing it with like some markers like in the Zoom. Sometimes you can do that. It depends on your platform, what you're using to teach. So, mm -hmm. but there's lots yes. of different resources. Perfect. Talking about adapting uh, these resources as well as other resources is going to be uh, one of the things that we're able to do in our debrief and discussion. So hopefully you'll also be able to get some ideas from your peers. Yeah, I'll put the link to the legacy school resources in the I just chat, did, Lisa. So. <laughs> <laughs> so fast. I love it. All right. Um, so I'm going to jump back over to our presentation. I love some of these answers coming in. Yeah. Some distances are quite intense. <laughs> some swimming and paddling looks like it might be involved. All right. Uh, so the discussion question, which does form a part of this resource in the full handout, uh, that I've pulled out for us to address as students is the following. If the places on the map had been marked in your first language, how would this exercise have been different? Um, so again, as we've been doing before, you can feel free to answer in the chat or you can raise your hand and Andrea can unmute you uh, so that you can speak with your voice.
So one thing that we tried to do with this map to kind of replicate what Cheney was experiencing is, as you'll notice, we don't have any place names on here. We just have some pictorial identifiers of what may be in the general area to kind of give a bit of an idea of terrain. Um, but, uh, you know, it's definitely, we don't have provincial boundaries, which is something that, you know, most of us are used to using to help us identify where we are. We don't have place names or little icons that tell us where, where capitals are. Yes, so I'm seeing some comments about um, about the map being more accurate if there were place names or um, being able to tell a lot easier where where you would be, knowing exactly where we are if it's in our language. Um, icons might be more familiar of pictures and landmarks if if other things were in our um, our language. Uh, Another really interesting point that just came in was that um, one participant is extremely familiar with the map of Canada uh, and doesn't need labels, but that's a privilege of education. So that's definitely an important thing is that the way that we formalized our education in settler society is looking at this map and identifying exactly where it is, whereas in other forms of education that may look a bit different uh, and you may be more familiar with what's around you. Yeah. Wonderful. If Cheney had been closer to home, he wouldn't have had a problem getting there. Right? 600 exactly. kilometers is a long way. It's very, very long. All right. So thank you so much for your, uh, your input and your willingness <laughs> to put on your student hats, uh, where you can go ahead and change those back to hats that we're perhaps a little bit more comfortable with, put our okay. teacher hats back on. I just saw a good, in the chat too, a good point is maybe make sure students can't access Google Maps because some people are cheating out there. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, so let's take a moment to um, debrief and discuss from our, <laughs> from our activity. Uh, so we're going to debrief and discuss the experience of watching the video, completing the map activity, and then having a discussion question. So as teachers, there are many different ways that we could break down these activities, um, you know, and it's, it's ultimately up to you guys what's important to you to talk about and to think about. Um, some ideas, if you're having trouble, uh, to think about different ways to, to experience these activities would be thinking about how they could be used in different classroom contexts, so online versus in-person versus blended. Um, also thinking about how students can extend their learning past these activities. As teachers, we're always looking for those opportunities. Okay, someone's learned something, but now what? Uh, and then finally, how can you help your students, or how can I help my students, use knowledge that they gain with activities like these and help them use that knowledge to perform reconciliations? So those are some thoughts for discussion, uh, but certainly if there's something else that you'd like to bring up, please feel free. Uh, we have our chat as always, um, which you can make uh, your messages available to everyone to kind of increase the, the flow of information and ideas. Uh, and you can also raise your hand and our moderator, Andrea, can unmute you if you would like. I just wanted to add to like sometimes in teaching the secret path it could be really heavy because the ending isn't is is a sad um, and terrible end for Cheney but what helps is the reconciliation actions right taking the knowledge and and making sure that Cheney's legacy lives on I know um, the when Jack family really likes seeing what schools are doing because it actually encourages them to keep um, retelling his story and their own stories of residential schools so thank you for sharing those with us and we make sure that we share them with the family too not to put you on the spot, Lisa, but just as people are putting their comments together, 
Um, could you give an example of a couple of notable reconciliations that schools in the program have um, done that you thought was really something different or something interesting? Um, yeah, there's a few that stand out. One of the teachers, I believe, is here, actually, but I'll start with another one. Um, there was a, an elementary school in uh, Saugeen Shores in uh, Ontario, and they actually started painting all their doors with um, different Indigenous languages and um, symbolism and cultures. Um, they're on uh, Saugeen First Nation uh, Reserve is right beside them. So, uh, but they, all the doors are different. There's like Métis and, and Honesty and they go through the grand, um, grandmother and grandfather teachings. Um, it's really cool. Uh, there's also a school in Toronto. I think one of the teachers is here. It's actually in the calendar. Um, last year, his, their students, their reconciliation action group started writing out um, all the names of the students or the students who died at residential schools. So it was a really like a passion project and, and quite beautiful and, and stunning. So uh, yeah, there's a lot of different things you can do just to pay tribute or to create awareness. Um, there's just so many different events happening. Um, I know in Northern, North Vancouver, um, they actually do uh, secret path screenings with parents and community to bring in um, the family. So everybody is learning about it. Cause a lot of us, like I didn't learn about residential schools when I went to school, I had no idea. Yeah, and if anyone out there, if you want to share what you're doing at your schools, there's a lot of great things happening. Uh, there was a hockey tournament in Kenora, so where Cheney was sent to residential school, they actually did a hockey tournament, um, students against teachers, to raise awareness just about the story and, and raise funds for us. So that was pretty cool. Yeah. A lot of different things. Uh, you know what? There's actually a video. I'll see if I can find it about what was painted on the doors. It's it's very um, DC Huston. This is cool. They've done a lot of great work at the um, at that school. Uh, I found it. I'll post it in the chat. Um, they've done a lot of great work. We went up a few, um, so the principal there has a really um, beautiful, interesting story. He went to school there when uh, he was in grade one. He actually remembers um, some of the First Nation students being held back. Um, and so he really wants to create change and make sure that the racism and systematic racism that once exists doesn't exist anymore. And the principal before them, they've done like, just incredible work up there. So the video is really cool. And even like in the reconciliation guidebook, we try to share what different schools are doing. So there's a map in this one. If you if you have the guidebook in the middle, there's a map of Canada and has different examples of reconciliation actions from from different schools everywhere. Hmm. Oh, very cool. Yeah. And the Woodland Center too will be opening up the Mohawk. Um, residential school, one of the first in Canada. It's opening up to um, guests again. Um, so that's a great um, way. And they have actual virtual tours. So if you're looking for virtual events to do, you can actually book a tour and survivors will talk about um, their experiences at the Mohawk Center too. And so the guidebook that you mentioned, is that one that comes with the Legacy Schools program that you're It does. About? It does, and it is actually um, on our website too. Perfect. Um, which I can post it up too. Yeah, it's under, if you look at the um, Legacy Schools resources, the first one is actually an online um, digital package with all the resources that are in the toolkits. I think I'll share that link just so everybody can grab that. Yeah, that'd be great. And we, um, the guidebook isn't like we don't just send out here do this it's not a checkbox it's really to encourage you to come up with new ideas to really um, share ideas with different teachers so that you can do your own unique reconciliation action that might make sense to you or your class or your community and it should be ongoing hopefully awesome 
thank you so much, everyone, for all of your comments and uh, questions and discussion. Um, so we'll just uh, take a look at our next steps. So, you know, let's say that we've taken a look at these resources, we're ready to use them, or maybe we already have used the resources that are in this uh, webinar. What do we do next? Uh, so there are many, many other resources available. So Lisa has mentioned the toolkit that's sent out. Um, these uh, two resource kits that are listed here first are part of the toolkit. They're also freely and publicly available at the bit.ly that you see on screen. So the first resource kit here is Indigenous Languages and Secret Path. Uh, that's the resource kit that the two activities that you saw today are from. Uh, we also have an educator guide that forms part of this resource kit, which gives you ideas on how to use it in your classroom. Now, this educator guide was written when the idea was still that schools are in place, uh, but uh, I'm sure that you'll be able to use the ideas that are in there and, and use them in your blended or online classes as well. Uh, as part of this educator guide, or as part of this resource kit rather, there's also an annotated, annotated bibliography, which can offer uh, you or older grade students um, some additional resources that you can go out and take a look at uh, about Indigenous languages as well as um, about residential school. Our second resource kit is uh, Storytelling and Secret Path, and this also comes with an educator guide. Uh, this one is geared more towards uh, middle schoolers. The first is geared more towards high schoolers. Um, although, as you can see today with the activities that we completed, those could certainly be used with a, with a younger grade as well. The, the other resources that form part of that first kit are a little bit uh, more complex. Uh, so those are two places that you can find resources. Lisa, did you want to talk about the others? Sure. And then there's also the Heritage Minute, uh, which Shane Belcourt um, directed with um, Pearl, uh, just talking about Janie's uh, life and story. Uh, finding the Secret Path on CBC Gem, uh, that actually has Finding the Secret Path, Secret Path, um, a little short doc about Pearl and Daisy visiting a school in Toronto, uh, another school, another reconciliation action, good example is um, County Day School, they actually did the, uh, redid a play called Ahead by a Century, so they created that at their school, um, so that's all on there, you can watch um, a whole bunch of videos. And then our legacy school resources are also all there. So we've tried to divide them by like region, age group, books, and we're constantly updating them. We have an educator advisory committee that we're working to constantly make them better. Um, yeah, and just in the chat too, I also sent um, a video from Carlancia Public School in Pickle Lake. Um, that's where Cheney Wenjack's uh, niece, Harriet Visitor, who sits on our board of directors as a family member. She taught there and that was actually the first legacy school ever. Um, and the video is really amazing because it shows what they're still doing, even though Harriet doesn't teach there anymore. So it's got a lot of great examples of what you can do. Perfect. Uh, so we have a few minutes. Are there any questions before we close up? I've had a few questions that I've answered in the Q&A section. Um, so just to, in case anyone didn't see those when they were going by, uh, one of the questions was, are the resources available in French? Um, unfortunately, not yet. Um, <laughs> certainly, it would always be our hope to have them available in the future, but not at the moment they aren't. They're all available in English. Um, and then I had another question just around whether there are any specific um, resources that might be interesting for high school music students. So Lisa, I pointed them to the live events that were happening. If there's anything else you can think of, um, feel free to chime in. Sure, um, on the French point, um, Secret Path, we've actually asked them to translate Secret Path into French, the actual um, graphic novel, but so far they haven't. So if you wanna write Simon Schuster and keep the push on, that would be great. Um, <laughs> and we do have, if you sign up for like our resources, the guidebook and the posters are in French and we're slowly trying to create more and more resources. As well, the Manitoba Teachers Union created some great ones for Secret Path that are in French and English for all grade levels. Um, so we're actually, I should make a separate section for French because um, we get that question a lot. Um, as for DDF, DWF Live, the music, um, yeah, a lot of the, we have a YouTube channel. So a lot of the musicians, we actually have an artist ambassador program. Um, we see a lot of Gord's friends and a lot of musicians will visit your school. 
um, and see what the students, really it's about seeing what the students are doing for reconciliation. So uh, the program started with the Arkells, actually went into a school in Ottawa and the um, school had created these beautiful big murals in their front um, foyer when you walked in about residential schools. So the students did a tour with the artists. Um, and we're, we were continuing that until COVID hit and then we put all the lessons online. So if you want to go online um, to our YouTube channel, there's a ton of um, musicians talking about their art and what reconciliation means to them and they're really great resources as well. Perfect. And the, the most common question is, is this being recorded and will we share it? So the answer is yes to that. We'll make sure that's shared with everyone. Perfect. All right. Uh, so that's it for us pretty much. Um, if you would like to reach up, out to us uh, with any questions about Secret Path Week or about the Learning Grid resources that you saw today, uh, our contact info is on the screen right now. You can take it down and reach out uh, whenever you'd like. I also, uh, Andrew and I just both posted the YouTube channel, so. <laughs> uh, and we've, yeah, we've got some great music and non-music events coming up uh, for Secret Path Week. Buffy St. Marie um, will be doing a mouthbow live session, so if you want to make a mouthbow with your class before next week, um, you can watch Science and Sound on our YouTube channel. She'll tell you all about the science, Indigenous science behind it, because Indigenous science was here before settlers came. And, uh, and then you can build a meth bow and she'll teach your students how to play it. Very cool. And uh, just before we sign off, uh, I did want to let you know that um, this webinar that you're attending right now is the first in Learning Birds Fall webinar series. Uh, we have two more webinars coming up. The, the next one will be in November uh, on the 17th at 4 p.m. Eastern. Uh, and it will be about culturally responsive assessment. And then the next one will be in December on the 10th at 4 p.m. Eastern. And it will be about continuing outdoor learning through the winter months. So we're all willing to do outdoor learning in the late summer and early fall, but how can we do it throughout the winter? So that's what we will be exploring in December. Amazing. Thanks, Learning Bird, for making great resources and hosting this. <laughs> <laughs> and thank you very much for joining us. Yeah, thanks everyone for coming out. I know you're all very busy, so thank you so much for joining. Yes, we really appreciate it. Thank you.